So for experiment 8, we'll be synthesizing aspirin. So for this reaction, we'll be reacting salicylic acid with acetic anhydride. Uh, acetic anhydride, we'll be using that in excess. What that means is that we'll have too much acetic anhydride to react with salicylic acid. And hopefully we'll use all of the salicylic acid and have leftover acetic anhydride. This is because acetic anhydride is quenched by water, so that's really easy to get rid of, even if there's excess. Uh, but we want to make sure that there's no salicylic acid contamination. And so when those react, we'll do that in acidic conditions using sulfuric acid as a catalyst. And we should produce aspirin and a byproduct that's uh, acetic acid. So salicylic acid, uh, this does have some pain relieving effects. However, because of its acidity, it uh, causes upset stomach. This is present in willow bark. People used to chew on that for pain relief from arthritis. However, aspirin, that has the same pain relieving and fever reducing effects. However, it, it's not as acidic, and so it's a lot easier on the stomach. So part of the, so part of the procedure is washing the final product. When we wash the final product, Hopefully we'll quench all of the leftover acetic anhydride and that will turn into acetic acid and all of the acetic acid should be washed away because it's soluble. Something interesting about aspirin is that it will decompose back into salicylic acid. Uh, it's not as stable as salicylic acid so over time it will turn back. Uh, in the presence of water, probably something like humidity, uh, it turns into salicylic acid and acetic acid. Acetic acid has a really obvious vinegar smell, so if your aspirin smells like vinegar, it's likely expired. However, you still will get the same pain relieving effects with salicylic acid, but it may cause upset stomach. So, for this lab, we'll be doing a few different analyses. So, blue litmus paper test. Uh, we're looking for if there is an acid present in the final product. So if there is an acid present, it'll turn the blue litmus paper to red. And you can see uh, salicylic acid and acetic acid, those are two obvious acids. Either of those two things are present, uh, we'll see a color change. And for the ferric chloride test, this test is looking for phenol groups. Uh, it's usually a red, or sorry, it's usually a yellow uh, colored solution. If it comes into contact with a phenol, it'll change into a purple color. The only the only component from the reaction that has a phenol group is salicylic acid. The uh, phenol group is right here. And if salicylic acid is present, then we will see a color change from the ferric chloride. So usually if salicylic acid is present, we'll see both a blue litmus positive test result and a ferric chloride test result. If acetic acid is only present, we should only see a blue litmus paper color change and we should see a negative result from the ferric chloride because acetic acid doesn't have a phenol group. And then the last analysis that we'll be doing is the TLC plate. And so in the lab we have an aspirin standard, we have a salicylic acid standard, and we'll be testing our made aspirin. So because aspirin and salicylic acid, they have different polarities, they should have different RF values on a TLC plate. Uh, and our made aspirin hopefully should line up with the aspirin standard. If there is any contamination, likely from salicylic acid, uh, we should see our made aspirin spot turn into two spots, and the second spot will likely end up lining up with the salicylic acid standard. Hopefully, if our products appear, we should only see one spot lining up with the aspirin standard.